we are recording. Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone. Um, Daniel, if you'll look for chats, if anybody has any questions during the presentation, feel free to raise your hand on the screen or um, put a chat uh, chat in and we'll read those as we go along. Or of course, you can always ask at the end. We do have time at the end. Uh, this uh, webinar uh, has typically been done separately, meaning tier one and zoological is one and tier two is another, but we are working to bring the two tiers and grant together. So thank you for everyone for joining today and congratulations. Uh, we're very excited that ZAP, uh, Count, Salt Lake City Council approved the funding recommendations of both advisory boards for ZAP on Tuesday. So 244 applications, uh, excuse me, 244 um, awardees is the largest amount we've ever had before uh, at $26 million, just, just a hair below that. So congratulations to everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started today. We have allotted an hour and a half. I don't know that it will take an hour and a half, but it's good to remember some of these things um, as, as we work through. We'll just send some reminders your way um, on this PowerPoint. These are, so this is not the COVID virus sliced in half in a lab. <laughs> this is an anemone from the aquarium. We just thought we'd show that. It's very beautiful. And we'll go ahead and start with just a little bit of overview of the ZAP program before we get into contracts. Here's our staff. Myself, my name is Samantha Thermos. I'm the director of ZAP. Daniel Sergios here is playing MC tonight or today. <laughs> um, is the grants and communications manager. Kelsey Ellis just joined us. You may get emails from her. She does all the capacity building workshops. Um, and then Ava is our assistant. ZAP mission, you all probably know a lot about ZAP uh, if you're a grantee. Um, we do this in three ways. One is grant making with all of you. So our metrics for this year um, is 26 million to 244 recipients, as mentioned before. And we reached 6 million attendees based off self-reporting in the applications this year for both tier one and tier two. The second thing we do is promotion. We try to work really hard to promote our grantees. We do promote ZAP a bit, but we also really spend our time on grantees, whether that's on our website or our calendar, social media, et cetera. So if you ever have anything you want us to promote or invite our board members to, just let us know. Uh, the last one is capacity building. Um, this is something that we've had uh, on the books for a long time, but haven't been able to do a whole lot with, just small programs here and there. But now we have a full-time manager managing a program. So hopefully you can participate in all kinds of courses like um, marketing and communications, to finance and attorney, to HR, um, and even grant writing. So um, hopefully it'll take place in that. This year was our pilot year, um, and we're looking forward to hopefully getting funding from the council very soon uh, to have it be a continuing program for ZAP grantees and potential grantees. ZAP's mission is to enhance Salt Lake County residents and visitor experiences through art, culture, and recreational offerings. We were voted in in 2096, I mean, sorry, 1996, um, and the first award went out in 1997. Every 10 years, we have a ZAP reauthorization or renewal, and that is this year. So I know a lot of you have heard um, a lot about us asking for folks to promote ZAP. Well, the reason that we're doing that um, promotion of ZAP is because we want people to be educated and informed when they uh, look at their ballot this year, because ZAP will be on there. All righty, these are some beautiful metrics right here. This is the, the tier one metrics. Um, the qualifying expenditure is that very large number, behind, over 113 million. That talks about some of the money that they're putting into the community um, and just regular matters of doing business. So we really like to see that number that jumped quite significantly. Remember tier one is 222 uh, tier ones and three zoologicals. The three zoologicals are the zoo, the aviary and aquarium. Um, you can look at their uh, economic indicators here with full and part-time jobs, contract jobs, and volunteers. Um, we love to see how many attendees and how many events as well. So we do keep, do keep those metrics and provide those um, to um, all kinds of legislators, uh, leadership at the, council, at the county and at the council, as well as our board members. These are the tier two statistics. Uh, this year we had uh, quite a bit more requested than we had available. That's the, big, the, big and the biggest stretch this year. Uh, we were flat funding this year. And so our requests um, were unfortunately not all met, but most of them were, I think we were at about 92, 93% of meeting requests on regard to uh, the number of grantees. Uh, out of the 231 applications, uh, 219 were re recommended to council. Uh, you can see here some other economic indicators of attendees and events and full part-time contract and volunteer jobs. We're really proud of all the tier twos 
uh, for making this happen. Again, this was self-reported in the applications this year for last year's numbers. All right, so, um, oh, did someone have a question? Sorry. All right. No other question? I think you're good. Okay, great. This talks about ZAP funding once a year. We get the tax revenues that come in from the county. Again, ZAP is based off sales tax in the county. Uh, one penny from every $10 to come to the program. Um, it's an annual process. It is a competitive grant. We, we fund um, operating and project funding. So one of the unique things about ZAP um, is that it's unrestricted funding. You can see that when the money comes in, um, it goes, 30% of it goes to the parks and rec folks. That's the rec centers um, and, and um, trails. And then you can see the rest remainder comes over to the arts and culture side for tier one, tier two, and zoological. Hey, Daniel, are you trying to work on an emoji? No. It's coming up on my, it's coming up oh. on my screen. <laughs> okay. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. Alrighty. This is what the grant making cycle looks like our annual cycle. As you all can tell, we are in the October through December. Where we're funding our contracts and payments are being processed. So um, we do ask for a two week window start day, having all the contracts in and signed um, by the 8th of November. And then we turn around and we get all kinds of things ready for payment for January. Jan twos get 60% of their funding. And so we do turn the contracts around pretty quick invoices around and then payments out the door in January. So that's the part of the process we're in. Um, each year we start up um, and open applications for tier two on March one and tier uh, one and zoological on April one. So you'll see how that cycle is. Now there isn't other pieces. We do other uh, workshops and some open houses and things in between, but this is basically the cycle for, for the grants themselves. Alrighty, if you're two tier one, excuse me, uh, or a zoological, um, the same contract due date of November 8th, the first payment each year is always in June, and that payment is three monthly payments combined in one. That includes April, May, and June's all in one that you will receive uh, in June. And then the rest of the year, it will be just monthly payments. Uh, your final monthly payment every year is always in March. Um, and that last payment is a variable payment. The rest of the monthly payments are solid um, certain numbers each month. The last one is the one that's a variable depending on tax revenue coming in to the county. Tier two payments again, November 8th. Uh, if you can't turn it in by November 8th, you need to let us know in advance. We pretty much close those up and get those to the deputy mayor to sign on the, uh, the next day or even at the end of that day, depending on where things are, for her to get those in and get them sealed so fiscal can start on invoicing. Um, again, the first payment is 60% in January and 40% in April, and then we're done making payments to Tier 2. So it goes pretty quickly for Tier 2. All right, before Daniel gets started on contractual obligations and some showing you some demonstrations and Zoom grants, does anybody have any general questions over that very general overview of payments about ZAP, our work? Okay, Daniel, I think it's all you. I think, yeah, I'm not seeing oh, anything in the chat. And so I think it's good. Oh, we got a couple of comments about, uh, yes, please invite ZAP to your events. That was very nice for someone to put that in. That was like Michael Hughes, thank you. Yes. Zap staff and Zap board would love to come to your events. Um, so please send us those in, um, invitations and fill out the form online as well. Uh, sometimes if we can't go, we have our leadership go. So it's always a good opportunity to uh, connect with county folks or um, volunteers of the county, which is the boards. Thank you for Michael. And I'll go in a little bit more in detail on, on how to do that if you need to. So, okay. Um, contractual obligations, why we're all here today. The super fun part about this, right? Um, yeah, I'll be going over uh, what is in the contract for both uh, tier one and tier two, some of the uh, general requirements that we have at ZAP. Um, and then I will go into a brief demonstration on how to sign your contract. So hopefully we are able to answer your questions. And if not, we can always um, answer them. And now it won't. 
let me go for it. Thank you. Okay. So um, I just want to briefly go over, um, we, we did cover this earlier in the year, and we cover this every year, about what ZAP funds can and cannot be used for. Um, ZAP funds are a lot uh, more flexible than some other grants. You can use it definitely for general operating support if you're an organization that is within Salt Lake County. So this is all of the tier ones and then most of tier twos. It's more restrictive when you are a tier two that applied for project specific funding. That means that you can only use it for what you specified within your application, um, but it would still fall along these lines. So I just want to point out a couple of um, things on this list. I won't go over everything, but um, definitely staff salaries and rent and utilities, um, artist fees. Those are super common and we uh, definitely encourage you to use it for those. Um, also, programming supplies, that kind of stuff, that can all be used for ZAP. Um, what you cannot use ZAP funds for, um, we do want to emphasize the the public art, so no like permanent installations. That cannot be um, something that you use the ZAP funds for. Uh, Regranting or like scholarships, that kind of thing. Like there can be no um, taking that money and turning it into a check and, and giving that out. That is something that's not allowed for ZEP funds. Um, and then we also want to uh, just emphasize a couple of things about like magazines, newspaper, radio, and then also activities that are primarily religious and promote a religious viewpoint. Um, those are things that are um, we encourage you to do elsewhere, but just don't use the ZEP funds for, for those specific programs. Um, I'm going to pause here and just ask if anyone has any questions before I go on. Okay, I don't see anything, so. All right, um, for tier two specifically, um, and I kind of mentioned this a second ago, but just wanted to emphasize it, that you must use your funds in the way that you described in your application. So if you did have a series of events that you outlined in your application that you plan to use the money for, you must use it that way. Um, also in the same timeline, um, you must use it within the fiscal year that you outlined and um, all those purposes. Uh, and if you do need to change that, there is a possibility, like there is a way to do that. You just have to contact us first. Zap staff needs to know that you're changing the way you're using the funds because it is tied to your application and your contract. So um, just reach out to us either through email or give us a phone call and say, hey, you know, our venue got, you know, we had to switch dates or we had to, you know, change venues because something came up. That's totally fine. We just need to know about it and may need to note it somewhere. So that way it's um, in the records. That way, when you do submit your evaluation, which I'll get to in a little bit, um, when you submit your evaluation, it'll be on record that there was a change between the application and the evaluation. Signing and saving your contract. So we definitely want you to keep record, keep your own copies of your contract and the exhibits. Um, so when you go into Zoom grants, and I will show you this in a moment, you will go to the um, either tier 2024 tier two contract or the 2025 tier one slash logical contract tab. You'll have your contract there, which you'll read through. And then there will be two exhibits that are attached um, as links at the bottom. You'll want to download both copies of that as well as your uh, a copy of the contract. And so you have all those um, saved and I will I will show you how to do that, but it's just a reminder that you need to have those things um, with you. And I saw something come up. Let's see. Is it possible for the application to ask for both programming and operating expenses on the same ac application? Yes, yes. Um, your application very, very, very well. They may very well uh, say that, you know, you're using some of the funds for like this percentage is gonna to go to staff salaries, like 10,000 goes to staff salaries, and then 5,000 is being used for the um, 
holiday event at the end of the year and 5,000 is being used for supplies. Like that is very possible. Um, it just depends on, on what you outlined in your application. And if it is general operating expenses, then the board knows that, you know, that'll be, can be moved around and not. It's just those big changes that we need to know about. But great question. Can I ask a question? Uh, sure. Yes. Uh, um, so if you applied, let's say for, you know, 20,000 and so you, you said you, you would do certain things with that money and then you get less, you know, let's say you get 5,000. So do you just pick out of those things that you listed that you would do with the 20,000? This is now what I'm going to do with the 5,000 since it's less money or. Correct. Oh. Yes. So okay. the board does not expect you to like, yeah, pertain to everything that you outlined. If, it, if it's a less amount, they just expect that those funds. Um, what was awarded will go to one of or several of the things that it, that you outlined within your application. As long as it's there that you plan to use funding for that, that's definitely sufficient. But great question. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, the logo usage guide, uh, just to explain this a little bit more. Um, and I think I'm receiving some feedback, so hold on one second. Okay. Um, so the logo usage guide, this, uh, guide is made for all of our, uh, grantees and knowing what the, um, specific, uh, obligations are to using our logo. We definitely want you to use it. Um, if we've learned anything from this year, we definitely need the zap logo out there more and as much as possible. So the, the public. Uh, learns to recognize this program and, and what it does. And so the easiest way to do that is to have the Zap logo on your materials. This is everything from your posters or your programs, if you're doing a play or a performance at a, at a venue. Um, your website, that's a great place, um, including it in social media graphics and, and all that stuff. We definitely want it out there. Um, please use it on the materials that do Either, you know, if it's if it's those performances and projects that you are directly using the funds for, or if it's supporting your general operating, um, please use it on on all your materials. We just want to people to know that our program is helping support your organization. And so this logo guide includes that as well as like the do's and don'ts, such as um, don't stretch the logo, don't modify its shape. Um, that sort of thing. So definitely read through that. And we, uh, we also recommend that you pass that logo usage guide on to your, um, either marketing staff or, or communication staff, your volunteers that may be putting materials together. Anyone who might be creating those, those materials of, of posters and programs and stuff. We want them to read through this. So please send that to them. You can also find it on our website. And I can show you that later. Why does it let me go? There we go. Um, okay, and then again, acknowledgement. So we want um, your we want your organization to use to use our banners and posters. Um, we do supply those. So um, part of your contractual obligation that's outlined is that um, for for your events and your spaces, you are supposed to put out um, Zap acknowledgement at those events and, and those spaces. So we do provide banners, posters, window clings um, for you to, to be able to put, put up. And so if you need any of those, you can reach out to us and we have them um, at our office at Mid Valley Performing Arts Center in Taylorsville. And so we can have you either come by to pick them up. I know I saw someone in here uh, just the other day to pick up a poster and a banner. Um, and so you can swing by or potentially if, if we do have the availability, we may be able to run and, and drop it off for you. Um, but please take advantage of those materials because we do want you to use them. Um, and I did see a couple of things pop up. So, um, are all of these stipulations in a contract or it's exhibits? Um, both. So the, the exhibits are part of your part of your contract, but there are items within the the contract itself that says recipient will use the zap logo on materials etc cetera, etc cetera. 
Um, are there more posters available to display at events or just looking pretty good? Yes, please. Yes. Let's set up a time um, for you to either stop by or um, or for someone to to run one run one to you. But yes, let's let's connect on that. Um, are these to borrow or rent? They're for you to take. Um, we definitely we we do not have unlimited stock, and we do uh, have a, a tight budget for creating them. But it is something that we do provide for you to take and keep on hand. So that way, you know, you're not. If you have 10 events throughout the year, you're not coming once a month to grab a poster. It's it's one for you to to keep with you. So, but great questions. Okay, advisory board and elected official invites. So part of your contract does state that you must invite must invite the board, uh, your respective board. So if you're in tier one, uh, you'd invite the tier one board. Zoological, same thing, or tier two, the tier two board. Um, you must invite invite them to at least one event per year, um, but we highly recommend you um, inviting them to multiple. Um, at that way, they do have those options and, you know, with their availability, they're able to attend events throughout the year. Um, several of you will um, see in your board comments um, when you get your feedback from your, your application that, um, you know, it'll note a board member attended the event. They had a good time, like that kind of thing. So, um, just so you know, the board is out there. They are attending your events and seeing you uh, out in the public and doing what you do best. So that's really exciting. Um, but if you need to invite them, um, all you have to do is go to our Zap website, zapsu.org, and uh, the the resources tab so the second to last tab um, at the top has uh, our resources and the first resources that are available on the page are the advisory board invitation form and the elected invitation elected official invitation form um, pretty soon we are making um, continuous updates and so one of the things we want to do is combine this into one form and that way you just select Yes, this can be for advisory boards. Yes, this can be for elected officials. And so that way it's a, a bit easier and you don't have to submit uh, two at once. But um, just so you know that those uh, resources are available for you on the website. Now playing Utah. So part of your contractual obligations says that you must post your events on Now Playing Utah. Now Playing Utah is a one-stop shop for uh, all events that are arts within um, the state. So when you have your organization um, posting events on Facebook and Instagram, that all of that is great, but we also want you to put them on Now Playing Utah. Now Playing Utah is used by, um, it, it has a really wide audience, so your events will get seen, um, and it is a free resource for you to have to be able to post those events on there, and it really does encourage the public and more people to know about it. In addition to that, Now Playing Utah's calendar of uh, ZAP grantees, they actually, those events actually get imported to our website um, on an events calendar as well. So when the public, um, if they decided they wanted to look at what our ZAP um, organizations up to and, and what can I go see? Because often they do know that Zap events are usually free or discounted. Um, they will go to our website to look that up. And so it's a really great resource and another place to um, share your events. So it is uh, contractually obligated, so you will have to do that. Um, but it is a really good uh, just practice to, to get into. Um, and then when you do your evaluation um, for for tier two applicants uh, or awardees, uh, you will have to do an evaluation about your 2024 funding. That won't be due until 2026 um, when you submit your 2026 application, but part of that evaluation is uploading screenshots and or links um, to your Now Playing Utah uh, events, uh, showing that you have fulfilled that contractual obligation. Um, another thing on that as well, um, your events in Now Playing Utah, they did switch their system a couple years ago. So it used to be if you needed to go find your previous event and take a screenshot, you could just kind of Google it and go find it. They've now since changed their website to where 
um, past events, things that um, have already happened do fall off from the public view. So if you need to access your past events, you do need to log into your account and then go find your previous listings. So just something to know um, in case you are unable to find your event, that may be why. Okay, payment works. Um, so uh, for for new new uh, applicants, um, this is something that you definitely want to know and take notes on. Um, if you are a returning applicant and you have received ZAP funds before, you may not need to worry about this unless your payment uh, information needs to be updated. So PaymentWorks is our county's vendor management system. In order to receive any ZAP awards and ZAP uh, payments, all organizations have to register within PaymentWorks. So if you have received ZAP funds in the past, you're likely already registered. However, I would double check if you're not sure, then maybe you need to talk with someone in your organization to make sure they uh, are up to date on this. Um, if your billing information does need to be updated, you'll need to log into your account and update it. So just something to note for that. If you are a new applicant, um, you'll be receiving an email uh, probably on Monday or Tuesday from myself. And that will be an invitation to PaymentWorks to be able to create an account, set up your banking information, and um, and and register. Um, that's the only way you'll be able to receive your ZAP payment. Now, when you do that, there's a couple things. Um, if you have a PaymentWorks account already, because you might have received funding from another source and they also used it, you will probably need to create a separate account. Um, because just because if you log in, there's no way to add Salt Lake County to your existing profile. It's like its own separate system. So note that. And then in addition, when you do um, either go in to update your payment information or you need to go in and create your account, um, please make sure to really read through what you're, what you're reading as far as um, payment uh, type because the default that um, we've been seeing is that it will actually default to um, a gift card. So they will, you'll get something in the mail that's like a, it's like a Visa gift card. But if you wanna receive direct deposit, you actually need to change it to ACH payment and get, uh, get, get that. Um, so that way you're receiving direct deposit. Um, we do recommend direct deposit as the preferred payment method because it is the fastest. Um, if there's any kind of warning about a fee, please notify us because that should not happen. Um, promise that's not a, a scam or anything. We just had a, an issue early on with payment works about that, but it's been resolved. But just in case as anyone gets added into the system, just note that. Um, and I did see a question come in. So I think that's everything I wanted to say on payment works. But yes, just know that um, either you'll need to update your information or receive an invite. Um, this says Salt Lake Arts and Culture different from Zap payment works. We receive payment. No, so that's I, I should have clarified. That's a great question, Nick. Um, this is just for the county. So Salt Lake Arts and Culture is part of the county as well as Zap. So Zap's actually under arts and culture and then arts and cultures under the county. So um, that is all taken care of. You can receive payments from both no matter, yeah. It's just if it was like, like if it was funding from, I don't know, the city or the state and they happen to use payment works, I don't think they do, but maybe it, that would be separate. So yeah, but great question. Okay, public funding. This is a reminder to everyone that your use of funds can be audited and your applications are now considered uh, public. So our applications um, and, and the way you report your funds, all of that stuff actually can be requested. Um, it's called a grandma request through the county. If someone would like to receive a copy of your application, um, an evaluation, that kind of stuff, um, it is considered public record. So. Um, if someone does request a copy of your application, like there's a member of the public and they're like, I want to see this organization's application from 2024. 
we would have to provide that to them, but we will let you know that someone has requested that uh, from us. So that way, you know, that they've received your, your information. Um, it does go through a process of like, uh, you know, redacting any personal information, that kind of stuff. It does go through the DA's office, but um, we just wanted to let everyone know and remind everyone that it is considered public. Insurance. Um, this is a fun subject, right? Uh, as a recipient of ZAP funds, it is expected that you maintain reasonable and appropriate insurance in, a, in accordance with industry standards. Um, this is language that's taken directly from your, your contract. It doesn't define what industry standards are. That is because we do not dictate what this might be. We expect you to know this, you to obtain that information and you to retain that, that level of insurance that's appropriate for your organization. So, although it's not something that we, um, you know, very neatly define and control, we do not dictate it. We do expect you to have this on hand as um, needed, and that can be um, requested info from you if needed as well. So, please make sure that you are up to date on your insurance. Okay, sharing with your team. Um, this we we have currently uh, seventy seven participants in the room with us, which is great. That's a great number for everyone to be here, um, getting this information in real time. We really do appreciate you being here today. Um, but we also want to make sure that there uh, we we acknowledge that there's a lot of people that's not in the room, and a lot of people that within your organization need to know this information. So we want you to share this information with board leadership, your development team, finance, marketing, programming, even down to your volunteers. Um, if if we've learned anything from this year, there's a lot of um, staff and volunteers that haven't heard of Zap uh, within our own. Um, supported organizations. So we really want you to share this information so that way they know about ZAP, know about the contractual obligations that you're trying to adhere to, and, and that may be needed to know for people who are creating the programming or creating the, the finances and, and reporting. Um, so that's, that's why we want you to share it with your team. So that way they're all in the know. It makes your job easier as a uh, you know, as you fill out your evaluation or next year's grants, that way they can have this in mind and, and know this information. I think it'll be helpful for them as they um, perform their own tasks. So make sure you share this with your team. Let's see, I just saw a brief message about someone uh, jumping on uh, and it and I, I, to answer that question, yes, we will. We are recording this session and we will be putting the recording up on our website and we will email out the link to the recording. Speaking of sharing stuff, um, make sure you stay connected with Zap. Uh, a lot of you already are, but make sure you're interacting with us online. This is a huge, huge thing. Um, as you all know, social media and, and communications is, is a big part of our our lives now, our everyday lives, personally and professionally. So make sure you're staying connected with us. The Zap uh, monthly newsletter, it does come out every month and we really do need uh, people to have eyes on that. It gives updates about um, the payment and grant cycle. So um, for everyone in this room, you should be receiving that uh, monthly newsletter. And if not, um, you can register for it on our, on our website. Um, but it also has other information about other grants that have opened up in, for other funding sources. It has um, upcoming events from our existing grantees. It has updates from staff, from uh, Arts and Culture, which we are part of that, that umbrella. So as they do um, events and programming, we have information from them. Um, so it has a lot of really useful information that is timely and so, um, we encourage you to look that up. And as Samantha mentioned earlier in this uh, in this presentation, we have created a uh, you know a whole new leg of Zap, which is consistent um, training and and uh, capacity building. Uh, Kelsey is doing an amazing job as the uh, impact manager, and we just had on last wait was that this week? That was on Tuesday. 
Um, we had our, our AI and the arts and culture uh, panel discussion event, which was really successful. It was an amazing uh, discussion and event. And I think it's, you know, it's very timely with that topic. And so um, that recording will be coming soon, but there will be, uh, th there will be, you know, more of that as, as the program, you know, continues. So uh, make sure you're doing that. Uh, Instagram and Facebook are our main uh, social media. So please make sure you're tagging us on that. Um, we are trying to get more Instagram followers. So if you can uh, send the account to three friends, um, that's that's kind of we're trying to really grow that. I think we're we're pretty close. We're only a few hundred behind the Salt Lake County Arts and Culture Instagram, and I think that's our next goal. I think we want to tie up with them or even pass them. Um, so please share that. Uh, same thing with Facebook and and uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's newer for us. Um, and we're getting really close or may, maybe by now have passed 200 followers. Um, and there we're really starting to share more of our, um, you know, industry stuff. Lots about, we have statistics, we have lots of stats all the time. Um, and it's, it's really exciting to be uh, growing that. And then we also uh, put like training recordings like this and, and other things on our YouTube page. So um, make sure you are following up on all of those. Um, I saw a few messages come in. One of them I think I'll save to the end. And then the, is there a list of upcoming programs? Um, on the on the website, so Kelsey's creating a, a, a next, the, the last program of the year, which is gonna be a virtual training. Um, I'm forgetting which date, it's on November, might be November 9th, don't call me on yeah, it, but November 20th. 20th, November 20th, thank you. Um, and that's going to be uh, a virtual training. And so we, we recommend you come to that and you'll receive that uh, in next month's newsletter as well. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, Zoom grants. I am now going to demonstrate how to sign your contract in Zoom grants. Um, I am going to use tier twos as an example, but it is um, nearly duplicative for tier one. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Okay. Just want to make sure I get the, the right window pulled up. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. And it is right here. Okay. So I am on the Zoom Grants login page, which you all should be familiar with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log in into Zoom Grants as normal. And so it will take me to my dashboard, um, which you all are familiar with. This is probably where it brought you when you received that lovely notification about being approved. And so you can see here, I have my ZAP 2024 tier two application. Um, and it, uh, I, I have the link here. And so in here, even though it says the application, this is where you're gonna find your contract. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into that. Um, I'm gonna hide these. And so now I'm within my, my account, right? I have my different tabs of my application and you can see now now there is a new tab here it says 2024 tier 2 contract if you're in um tier 1 or zoological you're going to see 2025 tier 1 slash zoological contract but it'll be in the same place and so i'm going to click on that and it'll bring me to the tab that has the contract you can see that it has my contract number at the top it has my name has my mailing address um, if anyone knows what Camp Half-Blood is, that's awesome. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, and yes, so everything that I just went through, it is um, within, within this contract. However, I still recommend you really read through it because uh, understanding your contract is important. So we recommend you read through it and then you're gonna be able to save a copy of this contract as a PDF. You can click this button here at the top uh, left-hand corner, 
And so you'll be able to save it as a PDF. Now we, we recommend you, you can do this now, but we really recommend that you save the contract copy once we have signed as well. So what will happen is after you sign, um, we'll sign for the exhibits, we send it to um, mayor's office for the final uh, signature. And then once all signatures are in there, we recommend you download uh, a PDF for your records. Um, so I'm going to scroll down I'm going to scroll down and keep going to get through all 21 sections and I get to the bottom. And so you'll see here that there are two documents. These are the exhibits I talked about earlier. So this is exhibit one, which is a copy of your application. It's a PDF that, you know, we export out of Zoom grants. And so you're signing for your application that you submitted, as well as the logo acknowledgement guide agreeing to the terms that are in the guide. So you're going to sign for both by putting in your name. Um, so you can see my name is here. Um, and if you're uh, in tier one, I think there are additional instructions that say like it, it's your name and your uh, title, I think, but um, very similar that you just put in your, your information and sign. And so when you click out of the box, it'll have this thing that says signature will appear here when the page is refreshed. So that lets you know that it has saved it and, and you'll see it when you refresh the page. There's actually one more place that you need to sign, which everyone's, uh, not everyone, a lot of people tend to forget. So I really want to emphasize you must sign at the bottom too, otherwise you're not done. So I'm going to sign here and it'll say the same thing. And so I'm going to refresh the page. And it'll take me to the applicant summary, I believe. Yep. So I'm going to scroll back up, go to my contract tab again, scroll all the way to the bottom. Sorry if that makes you a little dizzy. But now you can see that it timestamps um, my email. So it says Daniel Sturgios, I signed at this time. Um, and there are three signatures. There's one for each exhibit and for the final signature. You must sign all three times. Otherwise, we, you will get an email from one of us saying, please sign again. So um, that's really it on how to sign your contract. Um, the, and so if anyone has any questions about the Zoom Grants function, I can keep this uh, open um, or I can close it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing then. Okay, and then, and now we have time for questions. Um, that is the end of our presentation. So thank you for sitting through that. Um, yeah, I definitely want to emphasize just as we're as we're um, maybe waiting for some questions here. Uh, someone put in the chat. The Salt Lake Tribune had an article today about a uh, zap. There was actually two of them. One of them was a is a op ed like an opinion piece. Um, and then there was another one that was talking about the zap tax and its history and things. So. Um, really cool stuff there. We are excited for November 5th and to see what those results are. Um, so if you did not know it's on the ballot, be sure to tell your friends that it's there. Um, oh, I do see some new questions. Okay. Uh, application feedback be available. Oh, yes. Great question. So application feedback is going to be available um, later today as well as uh, as well as your contract. So um all your your contracts and your um, comments and those things um some of them it, it might already be in the system right now but it will be there uh by end of day um it's just taking a little bit longer for some of those to populate so um but it will be in there and you can find it um under the um scoring and, and feedback section so um forgiving as you mentioned does the signer need to be the primary applicant contact or can it be? Oh, that's a great, great question. Um, yes, I definitely want to clarify this. So the person that signs your contract must have contract signing authority. And so that's up to your organization. If you as the applicant contact um, have that signing ability, go ahead and sign. If it needs to be your executive director, your CEO, 
um, they will need to be added as a collaborator. You might have already added them, um, but let me actually show you, since I brought this up, um, how to do that. So I'm going to share my screen again. I'm already in, in Zoom Grants, um, and I'm on the Summary tab. Under the Summary tab, I do have a section that's for collaborators. Um, if you've already added them, you will need to give them editing access and or like there's a, a contract box now that wasn't there before. So if you added them as a collaborator back in April, you have to go back in here and check the little box. Otherwise, they will not be able to sign. So um, go ahead and make sure to check that box. If, they, if you need to add them now, go ahead and enter the email address, first name, last name, um, their title, and then uh, you can send it to them to add as a collaborator. Um, so that's for those who don't need access to like actually own the application and, and have that, but um, just be collaborator for design. So that's a great question though. Thank you for the reminder on how to do Daniel, that. Before you, before you move on, um, can you mm -hmm. show folks uh, what we're, the, where they can find the board's comment feedback? Yeah. And anybody in tier two that applied for more than 22,000 and the tier ones and the zoologicals uh, where they can find the CPA's feedback and financial health test results. That's a great point. Let me. And, and then I think um, there's a question to you as well. Let me pull up, I think, let's see. Okay, yeah, while I'm pulling that up, I'm gonna continue answering questions because I do, I think in my example application, I don't know if there's any comments in there, so it won't show up, um, but I can add that as we as we talk here. So, um, does the signer need to be the primary, oh, we answered that one. We don't have to submit the document once we have signed it, do we? No, so after you've signed your documents, um, that's all you need to do. Um, one of the common, misconceptions is that after you've signed it, you have to like re upload it. And so there will be extra attached documents. Please, please do not attach any extra documents. Um, everything that we need is already in there. You don't have to, to, um, submit them at all. Um, let's see. Are the contracts signed digitally or must we sign an actual document? scan and send back. It's just signing within the Zoom Grants platform. You do not have to print anything out and upload PDFs, none of that. It's just putting in those signatures in those three fields. So, uh, okay. There's the official decision, documents. Let's see. Okay. The adding collaborators videos link goes for it is broken, does not go through. It goes to a screen that says service unavailable. Oh, interesting. Um, I have it even pulled up too. Uh, I will um, connect with you. I'm going to write down that name. I'll connect with you to send you an updated link. Um, but the app adding collaborators video uh, does show what I just barely showed. So on your application summary tab, you're going to that collaborator section and putting in the email address, first name and last name. Um, that is, and then uh, you hit send an invite. So uh, you should you should have the information needed to be able to send a uh, collaborator invite. Um, are we allowed to print the contract, have it reviewed, stamped by our attorney, and then submit this city manager for signature, then upload it to you? That's a great question. Um, it depends on what your organization, there are a couple that are very specific, like I, there, I think it's like Murray City and someone else, or, but there's, there's a couple contracts where we still do physical, but I believe, um, Unless your organization specifically requires that, you will not have to do that. You will have to, you you as the person or them as the uh, contract signing authority uh, have are able to in, sign it in the system. 
Um, that's probably easier too. So that way you're not keeping track of like a physical document and a PDF somewhere in your system that it's already housed within your, your account in Zoom Grants. Um, but Craig, yes, you can. If, you, if, if your city prefers to review the contract and legal um, and then make any adjustments, you can let us know. Um, if you want to stamp it, that's fine as well. Just let us know if that's what's going to happen. Sometimes people print it, someone else reviews it, then they go back in the system and sign it. But if you need anything, uh, just let us know um, and we'll have to make arrangements, um, which is fine. We've got a couple folks that prefer to do that actually, so that's okay. I think Daniel, you were going to pull up the uh, mm -hmm. official decision comments, and then the um, when the CPA provides feedback on the financial health test or the qualifying expenditures need to be revised. Yeah, but I think we can show it blank if you don't have one that's uh, a sample that's doesn't have criteria. But so let, you do you do. let me refresh the page. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, so. I'm on the summary page, and if your organization, uh, let's see, so for tier one uh, zoological and tier two organizations, you have um, additional documents that it, you don't need to sign for them, but you do need to see them and them. Um, this is, uh -oh. this is receiving some feedback, so let me. It is. Oh, I can't find it now. Okay. Um, Can I share my screen and just do it? Yeah. Or do you I already was, have one pulled up? Okay, I have. Ahead. I have mine pu pulled up, and and so under the documents, uh, everyone, if if you are an organization that received uh, over twenty two thousand, you're gonna find um, in the documents tab um, a section that says administrative documents. Um, it's not. It's not pulling up in my account, but um, Samantha, did you want did you want to show them or no? Um, I can show them. Um, what it, my screen looks like a reviewer. I guess it doesn't. Um, it's based, it's on the home page under the application summary. It says official decision comment. That's what you want to look at. It's the comments from the board, and then you want to go into your documents tab, and there's going to be a documents tab. Um, with a really simple name at the bottom called administrative documents. That is where I've uploaded any CPA documents. So uh, if you haven't submitted anything to the CPA or financials or QE, um, there won't be anything for you to review under administrative documents under the documents tab. Um, don't worry about it. But if you did, please see her feedback on your qualifying expenditures worksheet or your financial health test or both. Um, and then all grantees uh, of any size or, or dollar amount um, those are where you see the comments um, on the application summary page that says um, official decision comment. And usually there's two to three bullet points from the board directly to the grantee for improving their application or, or for things they want to celebrate and share that they really enjoyed about your application. Um, if I pull mine up, I'm under a reviewer. I thought I could do it, but I am not. So um, just want to let you know that we're, we'll have those by the end of the day today. Um, so you can, most of you can probably go in and see all of that, but there'll be a few of you that we're still tweaking a couple things, um, in the system. It's, it's not the comments or the board or the applications. It's the system that we have, uh, the zoom grant system. So those will begin by the end of the day. You're more than welcome after this meeting to go look for them. They should be up. Most of them should be up there. If not, just wait till the end of the day and we'll have them up there for you. Uh, a couple of things I was going to reiterate. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Daniel. We're going to. Oh, I was just going to say, I did. I, I am able to show where the okay, administrative great. documents are. Fabulous. Right. Just took a second to load, I guess. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm in my my application as an applicant. Uh, I have my documents tab, right? And this is where you uploaded your org chart and your your QE sheet if you're tier one or zoological, all that stuff. At the bottom here, there is a section that says administrative documents, and so that's where, I mean, you can see right here, I've uploaded a an exhibit, but um, this is where it'll say CPA checklist. And so you can go in there and it'll allow you to download it. So that way you have that. Um, and that's what Samantha's talking about for you to review. So. Sorry, you can continue. I was just gonna share a few last comments, but maybe we get through a few questions uh, if okay. there's any more, uh, just glance through them. And then I just wanna leave a couple of comments and wrap things up. Let's yeah. Go on a Friday. Um, Let's see. So, Justin, I, it says uh, Zoom grants. Okay. 
So all of you can view but not sign. Do you know if if any of you are like the um, you're the applicant, you're the applicant contact, like the main applicant contact, or are you collaborators? I feel like you may be the applicant contact. I'm not sure. Um, I'm a collaborator. Okay, so for your case, Cheryl, you may have, um, I, I can possibly look it up while I'm typing or while I'm talking here, but if you are a collaborator, but you don't have access to sign, it may be because someone needs to give you that access. Um, looking at it um, you are added as a collaborator and you have access to the application. You do not have access to the contract. Someone, uh, the, the applicant contact, um, he needs to go in there and click that button that was I was talking about earlier, that little box that says 2024 contract. He wouldn't have been able to add that before today. So um, he will need to go in there and give you access. Same thing for the others. Okay, that's why. Yep. So whoever is your applicant contact, they wouldn't have had access to be able to at, give you access to a contract because they didn't have access previous to today. So they'll need it to give you that access. Is secondary contact collaborator? Yes. Um, and even if people have been given that access in the past years, um, each application is separate on its own. So when they went to create your application for 24, they had to add you as a collaborator again. And so they will have to re-give you access each each year. So, um, to kind of avoid that situation altogether, um, it is possible if your organization has a non-person like specific email, so it's not bob at artsorganization.com, um, but it's it's you know development at or grants at. We recommend doing that for an application contact. That way, if one more than one person needs access to the application and and needs that access, that it's not contingent on someone's personal email. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't find whose mic is on, but I can hear someone's background. Any other questions in the queue? Not in the queue. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, wrap up. Oh, can you person who's talking while you're talking? Um, so I'll just wrap up with a couple comments, maybe then Daniel, because I know people want to go on a Friday afternoon. Um, I just want to again congratulate everyone who is um, here today and everyone who um, was awarded money. It was very tight and competitive this year with 31 new applications, which is a record, um, and the funding was flat. So congratulations to everyone. Very, very much so. The board was very impressed this year, both with Tier 1, Zoological, and Tier 2. Um, a couple things to just remember is I'll, I'll emphasize that um, if you want to invite the board or the council or staff to your events, please, please do so. We, we love that. The board loves that. Um, getting your contract signed on time would be wonderful. If you have any hiccups, please, please contact us so we can help you with any of the systems issues, maybe, or an understanding, or if you need to print it and scan it back in, those kinds of things, we'll be happy to work with you. Um, the other piece I would say that might be the most helpful uh, to, to Zap is if you do change anything, um, again, Daniel mentioned this before, please let us know. Uh, there's probably one or two cases a year that we get a call and someone says, you know, what another funder through fell through, or we're not doing this event because X or Y, you know, can we, can we use this money to, to pay for a class and the supplies? Can we use this money for um, um, beefing up another program that we were going to do anyway next year? And we do those many, many times. And basically we just have you um, send it to us in writing information, and then we attach it in the application. That way, if the board looks back or anyone looks back, it's all on record exactly how you spent your money. So we're pretty flexible on that. Again, we don't get many, many offers to do that or many requests to do that. But if you do, please let us know in advance as much as you can. Um, and then let us know when you need anything. If you want us to promote an event for you in our newsletter or social media, um, whether it's post event or before the event, as well as um, if you need any materials, again, we are happy to give up posters and banners and window clings. We're delighted to partner with you on any of those things and get them out to you if you can't make it to us. So 
that's about all I had. I, I know that it's a Friday afternoon. It was very torturous for you to come. Uh, but thank you so much for your time and for listening and for being a part of the Zap family. Daniel? Yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah, I don't have anything else to add other than uh, congrats to you all. I hope you have a great Friday, a great weekend. Um, and thanks for coming. So. Thanks, everyone. Okay, I'm going to stop recording somehow. I can't find the button. <laughs> I swear WebEx moved everything. Okay. I think it's on the very right hand little tiny corner. See it? Uh